Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. What is going on? <laughs> I'm using my desk uh, and it took me over to this area called Live Producer and it says go live now. So I think I'm live, but I can't tell. Ah, I think I am. Okay, great. Hey guys, this is Christy Saw, the co founder of the Post Institute, coming at you live. Um, let's see, comments, comment moderation, not set. This is a whole new, like I turned on my, um, okay, I think I'm good. Uh, if anybody's watching, <laughs> say hi real quick so I know that this is working. Um, I'm actually on my desktop because my phone is currently <laughs> being used to troubleshoot a television issue. So anyway, uh, I want to plug these two books real quick. So first we have, I'm on my desk camera, so it's a little tricky. Uh, Brian's book, The Great Behavior Breakdown, is an incredible read, and Brian's book, Brian Post, From Fear to Love, um, this one happens to be, they're both really, really good. This happens to be one of my absolute favorites, just because it's created to be an easy read um, on some really deep topics, and so um, it gives you uh, some understanding about trauma and how trauma affects the mind-body system. It talks about... Um, a deep understanding of that it helps us understand that there's a lot that's going on below the surface that we the more we can understand the better hey Joni hey Leslie thanks for saying hi you guys um so it looks like everything's working you might have said hi 10 minutes ago but <laughs> I'm just now seeing it so uh, again this is like the first time I've ever used the um, Facebook live from the creator platform so it is just a little bit tricky and I'm opposite of me so that has me a little bit confused so anyway um, tonight I wanted to talk about um, first I wanted just to again compliment Kyra um, as she's reading through the books from Fear to Love and the incredible graphics that she's creating. And it's just creating so much really good conversation amongst you all on the Facebook page. And I love that. Um, and also, excuse me, I'm just, obviously, I'm just not in my most comfortable place. And I'm working on that. Um, and the other, the other thing is she's just pulling because she's seeing this through a lens that's sort of new to this topic. And so... Um, the way she sees it and the things that resonate to her heart, um, I think are really touching on nerves of other people. And that's a really good thing. That's how we're going to grow together. And so um, there were a couple of graphics today that were created um, speaking specifically about stealing and um, self-mutilation, self-harm behavior, and how those things can be addictive. And um, some of the folks were a little confused. Um, but then there were also some people who did a great job of really explaining it to me. But I want to talk about it a little bit more um, because what we're talking about is that these are behaviors that soothe an internal state of distress. And um, I think about Lindsay Lohan and Rhinona, uh, Winona Ryder. Do you remember those two women? Emma? Lindsay Lohan was caught stealing a necklace that was like a $2,000 necklace. Winona Ryder um, was caught shoplifting um, makeup from like CVS, Walgreens, a store, something like that. Both of these are famous actresses um, who have, I'm sure, plenty of money to pretty much buy, you know, whatever they want to. Um, and then this is also coming from Brian Post, who was a thief in his childhood. And he talks about it. Um, what he talks about is the state of stress that's going on internally. And then this, he said, you know, I'd go in and I would steal things that I don't even need. Like I'd go in and I'd buy like a cassette tape and I don't even have a cassette player. And he said it was the energy that would build up. And then when he would steal, it was a, it was a release. And it's that build up and the release that becomes the addictive cycle. The same with self-mutilating behavior, that the pain 
there's a massive endorphin rush with the pain. And so the pain of it, sort of like how people talk about tattooing being addictive, the pain of it and the release is the part that's the addictive process. Pornography, very similar. It really creates a whole lot of activity on the brain level, and that brain level activity is very addictive. It's <laughs> internally. So um, the other thing that I think is important for us to give consideration to as we think about different behaviors and what the internal experience is, um, one is, uh, I'll just throw in this other one because I was listening to a person who is actively in therapy working on their narcissistic personality disorder. And what he shared was how amped up he gets at the brain level, the level of endorphins that get flowing when he's really trying to convince the other party of whatever. So when he's all up in his gaslighting and all up in telling his story and all up in presenting his whatever, uh, that in, he said, I can feel it in my brain. It's like, whoo, like fireworks going off. It's just like a little party up there. So, you know, when we hear from, when we hear the experiences from people who are really working on it, um, I think that we have to, we have to take that to heart and listen to what they're telling us, that there's something more to it than just wanting something and not having money for it and taking it. Um, so um, having some understanding of what is going on at the brain level is extremely important. The other thing that I have found to be really interesting is how, and I've, I noticed it more as my children got older and in working with older adults. Hi, I'll, I'll be done in a minute. I'll be done. Oh, there it is. Oh, I, I'm, excuse me. I'll be right with you guys. <laughs> Um, yes, um, honey, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to call you back to do that. Okay, thank you. All right, sorry about that, guys. We're trying to multitask, and it's kind of hard sometimes. Sorry. Um, so, um, what I find, especially as I'm working and and doing more work with older adoptees and their families, and especially around it, in that twenty as they're trying to step out into adulthood is that oftentimes they'll be very attracted to things that um, are similar, that resemble things that they never, like they don't have a conscious memory of it, but it's very similar to the lifestyle of the family that they come from. Um, that it's like it, it resonates, reson I can't say that word very well. Uh, it fits with the vibrational pattern. So when we speak about these things that are stored at the brain level, and when we speak about the development of the, the neurology and development of the spine during the very first, very first four weeks of pregnancy, the spine is developing. And when we talk about the brain stem developing, we talk about when the amygdala is developing, when we talk about what's going on in the womb, I find it to be so fascinating that oftentimes, Elder adoptees will gravitate towards lifestyles that are very reminiscent of their families of origin, even if they did not know those families. Now, I'm not saying that is for everyone. I just know that it's something I personally have seen at least in 20 different families that I've worked with. And I've seen it also for my own son. And so it's like um, when they start stepping off, there's just something about you know, sort of a, maybe a chaotic lifestyle that is very attractive to them. It's very appealing to them. It doesn't feel as risky to them because it, it fits with a vibrational pattern that is familiar in some way to them. And I think that there may be some hidden elements of that when we think about these things that are, uh, these behaviors that are referred to as being addictive, plus knowing what's going on at the brain level is super important. Um, so one of the things that is mentioned in the graphics is containment. And again, I want to make sure that you guys understand that when we talk about containment, we're not talking about holding. We're talking about making the space smaller. And so if you know that stealing is difficult for your child and that's a challenge that they have, then keeping them close while you're in places that could be a temptation is important. And then I want to just... Um, 
I'm, I'm look. I want to look through, and I should have done that before I got on. Um, and I apologize, but hang on just for a minute. The child becomes overstimulated by the number of people and the amount of activity in that environment. This overstimulation, in turn, causes stress. Stealing then helps the child to calm the stress. Can you see why I say that stealing is an addictive behavior? Any severe behavior is usually predictable. If you're noticing, if you have your noticing eyes and you do your investigative thinking and you realize, I'll tell you what I learned in hindsight. Hindsight's always 2020. When I look back, especially to the time that we were serving so many children in the group home, the times when there were massive blow-ups that involved me always happened when I was trying to do too much. When I had too many responsibilities and a person who really needed a lot of attention did not get my attention, nor did I was I attuned to where they were in their emotional state. And as a result, there would be, and when I say, I mean, like major property destruction and things like that, that there's about three times, three really big times, two times was my house being trashed and another time was the group home being trashed. And it was because my part of responsibility was that I was not attuned to where they were emotionally and I was trying to finish up something so I could get on to my next thing. So they were feeling my absence. They weren't feeling my presence. They were already dysregulated before that that happened. And so when you do Z, Z was the blow up. But when I go all the way back, I see what my part in that was. And I see what I could have done different. That is that place of being able to take responsibility. Does that mean I am to blame that it is my fault? I don't even use those words. But if you want to say that, you know, you want to blame me, I just say, well, I got big shoulders. So, okay, that's all right. We were jointly responsible, but I am the adult. I'm the adult. And so as the adult, yes, it was my responsibility to attend to those children differently. And I missed it. I missed it. And there was a big, big, big blow up because of it. So I say that just thinking about what Brian says in terms of severe behaviors being predictable, especially when we're attuned to what's going on. And when he talks about... Um, containment he says things like um well, yeah i want you to put your hands on the cart or you know if they're still of a size that you can put them in the cart and i don't really care how old they are like if they want to ride in the big cart i can throw the groceries all on top of it and we can just make it a fun time that's awesome and to even just be able to say well baby when you go to the store you get really stressed out from all the noise and all the sound and all the smells and your hands end up taking things that don't belong to you so i just need you to stay with me so when, when you work with children who come from difficult places, you get well-versed at being able to talk about things just very matter-of-factly. There's no anger in my voice. There's no resentment. There's no hate. There's like nothing. It's just, that's just a fact. Just the fact is that, you know, when you get in that situation, you get overwhelmed, you get stressed, and you take things that don't belong to you. Um, we had a situation within like our family, family friend group where um, an item got stolen and so I just talked to the mom and um, we talked a little bit about, you know, well, she's been over here a lot and she's probably missing you. And, and it's probably more stressful than we than what we realize. And so, you know, um, by just having that compassionate heart and a deeper understanding, it gives you an avenue for soothing the stress and speaking directly to that subconscious of what's going on under the surface. And again, when we shine the light, when we start shining the light in our subconscious and in those dark recesses and we begin to bring these things up to the conscious awareness, oftentimes they just can't stand. They cannot stand up in the light. And so even bringing the light and the awareness to your child, of, you know, I think you just get really stressed out and then, you know, you take things that don't belong to you. So I hope that's helpful. I hope it, it explains that a little bit more. Um... You know, uh, I mentioned in the post, I mentioned pornography, and I want to talk about that more. Um, but I think that um, I want to, we've gone for about 15 minutes, so I think I want to save that for our next conversation. We'll talk about some information, some research that tells us about how that affects us at the brain level. 
and uh, we can talk about maybe just some ideas about how as a family um, we can help support all people. See, this isn't, these aren't just uh, things that affect our children. They affect, they can affect anyone because it's a human issue. These are human, human challenges, not just child challenges. So uh, thanks for hanging with me today. I know it was a little awkward. Uh, if you guys are having a fantastic Friday, I hope that you have a beautiful weekend planned. I hope you enjoy your children this evening. I hope you take time just to kick back and enjoy them in whatever way you guys do. If it's family game night, if it's dance party night, if it's flop on the TV, flop on the couch and watch TV night, if you guys are out ripping and running, whatever, whatever it is that you have going on in your world around you, just take a minute, just take a second, take a deep breath, relax those shoulders, loosen that jaw, and just... Um, Remember how much you love those cute little kiddos. Make sure that they can see that when you look at them. Make sure they can feel that from your heart, just from the energy of you. And remember, as Brian reminds us, in any given moment, we have two choices. We can act out of our same blueprints of stress and fear and overwhelm. Or we can take one to two to three to ten deep breaths. And we can choose love. And I hope you guys choose love. And I think I can get it to turn off. There we go.